I'm Tim Taylor. It's Sunday, July 9th, just before church, and I want to share with you a prophetic experience the Lord shared with me yesterday through a sign and a wonder. And the sign was God sent an eagle that screamed next to my house for more than easily 15 minutes, if not longer. What did that eagle sound like? And you got to understand the context. I was actually out grilling dinner. I was grilling hamburgers at dinner time. And this is what I hear. That went on for 15 or more minutes. And immediately it makes me think of the scripture in Matthew 24 that talks about the end times, what will be the sign of the Christ coming, that kind of thing. And it says, verse uh, 20, uh, Matthew 24, 24, for false Christ, false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Do we have a bunch of false prophets rising up today? Oh, yes, we do. And I don't won't go into that. But it says, see, I've told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms. Don't, don't believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will, will be gathered together. And for years I have had, I, I haven't understood what that meant. And the Lord, through this sign of wonder, gave me some insight that I want to share with you about that goes on to talk about immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give us light. So you get the context here. And as I contemplate that, I, I, I begin to meditate upon it. Um, I go over to Revelation chapter 4, verse 2 through 11, and it talks about there is a throne set in heaven, and one who sat on the throne... And it talks about the four living creatures. And one of those living creatures had the face of an eagle. And they're going around, they're on and around the throne. And they are crying, singing, holy, 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 or saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And it goes on to talk about that. And, and uh, it made me think, because I'm thinking, this is clearly Jesus. And it makes me also think it's like Psalm 110. Because in Psalm 110, 1 through 2, it says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. And so as I'm contemplating this, I'm contemplating, I, I understand this refers to Zion. I'm thinking about the throne of God, which is in Zion. I'm thinking about Jesus, who's the king of kings, sitting on the throne. And then it, uh, it um uh, it goes on to Revelation chapter 12. Now I want to look at Revelation chapter 12. Uh, so I'll start in verse 10, but I'm going to focus on verse 13 through uh, 16. Um, but it says in verse 10, it talks about how the accused of the brethren who accused uh, them before the uh, God day and night has been cast down. And it says they overcame. Now listen to this. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Now think again, remember, for wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So here, they did not love their life to the death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows his time is short. Verse 13. Now when the dragon saw he had been cast down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Okay, the church is likened unto the bride. Israel is also referred to. Um, the, the nation of Israel is referred to in the feminine fashion as well. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for times, times, and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now, the truth is, I, we could spend hours dissecting this, but I want to share with you the insight God gave me specifically about the eagle and wherever the carcass is, there were the eagles be gathered together. That's really what I want to focus on. But it says here, the earth helped the woman. I just got to think it. Are there any examples in scriptures where the earth responded to spiritual things, where the earth helped God's people? And so if we go to Leviticus chapter 18, for example, verse 19 through 25, we'll find there are these actions 
that are describes various sexual activities or relationship activities that the Bible calls abominations. And abominations are literally actions will literally destroy a society. It will cause a people to cease to exist. And it says in verse 25, it says the land will respond and will literally vomit the inhabitants out. So that's the way it's described there. But the question is, do we have any examples in Scripture where the uh, earth responded and helped God's people? And I submit to you, if you go to, uh, and remember, Korah and the rebellion in Numbers chapter 16, Korah rebelled. God had Moses tell the people, separate yourselves from Korah. And he warns them saying this, but if the Lord creates a new thing, the earth opens up its mouth and swallows them up with all the things that belong to them. They will go down alive into the pit and you will understand these men have rejected the Lord. So we have an example here in scripture where the earth opened up. So it makes me think about, again, the earth opens up here and who the people of the rebellion are the ones that are swallowed up by the earth. God makes a distinction. There's a separation that comes in because of people's choices. Those who chose to serve the Lord and those who chose to rebel, those who chose to not to. And so, anyway, uh, we also have an example where I will submit to you, if you're a wise steward, you understand God's word, you understand his spirit, then you will understand how the world was designed. You will understand the spiritual laws that work. So, for example, Balaam, for example, uh, was hired by Balak in Numbers 22 and 23 to come and curse Israel. But God would not allow Balaam to curse Israel. Now, Balaam loved money. And so instead of cursing them, because he couldn't curse them, God wouldn't allow, allow him to curse them. He could only bless them. But in Numbers 31, Balaam gives Balak wisdom and counsels, telling him how they can, he can trip them up. And they did that through them doing some actions described in Leviticus 18. So that's a study you can do on your own sometime. But I want to go to Jude chapter 1, verse 8 through 11. It says, Likewise, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Now listen to this. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like Bruce Beast and these corrupt things, they are corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. They've run greedily after the error of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Now, this is a warning about the end times. And these are some things that's describing to you. So this kind of connects it all together, what, what I'm saying here. That's what I'm trying to do is connect these actions together and give you examples of what that might look like. Now, I also want to go back to the word eagle. He gives them two wings of a great eagle. That word translated eagle in the scripture, it says this in the Strong's. It's from the eagle. It means a, a, it's called eagle from its wind-like flight, and the root word refers to wind or air, and um, and so it also goes on to say this: eagles do not usually go in quest of carrion. This may be a vulture, but it resembles an eagle or the eagle standard. It refers to the Roman military. And that immediately makes me think of Joel chapter 2, verse 3 through 11, because it talks about a people who come forth like whom the Lord's never seen before. A fire burns before them, behind them a flame burns. And it goes on to describe, it says in verse 11, uh, the Lord gives voice before this army, strong is the one who executes his word. So, again, I'm thinking about the army of the Lord. I'm thinking about the end times because it goes on in Joel 2, Joel 3. It talks about the outpouring of the Spirit on all flesh as your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your, right? And it goes on to say in Mount Zion there will be deliverance. And everybody who calls upon the name of the Lord in Zion will be saved. And so, again, it's time in Zion, salvation, the end times, all that kind of stuff. And that's the context this is making me think of. And so... Go to John chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. 
and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now remember, the root word of eagles is wind, that air. And everyone who is born of Spirit is led by the Spirit of God. They're like the wind. Rome, now, now think about it again. <coughs> Excuse me. He talks about... He will send his angels with the great son of a trumpet. Oh, excuse me, back up. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, dead bodies, there the eagles will be gathered together. So I'm thinking about the eagles, the wind of the Spirit. Everyone who's born of the Spirit are loved by the Spirit of God. Now, dead bodies. Romans 8, 13 through 14 says this. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. It makes me think about take up your cross and follow me. The Lord expects us, he says, verse, uh, Romans 8, 13, put to death the deeds of the body. Wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Those who take up their cross and follow him, they are dead to themselves. They are dead to this world. They are dead to the fleshly carnal desires because they put to death on the cross. They take up their cross daily. We take up our cross daily and follow him. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 27 says, Jesus says to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man who gains the whole world and loses his own soul? For what will you man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in glory with his Father and his angels, and he will reward each one according to the works. Again, Wherever the dead bodies are, and I submit those who take up their cross daily, you will find a dead body. Somebody who's died to the fleshly carnal desires. Now, as I contemplated also understanding spiritual laws and wisdom, I want to give you wisdom on how to steward yourself and walk in these last days. Now, it made me think of a scripture in Psalm 125, 1 through 3, where it talks about the scepter of wickedness won't rest on the land allotted to the righteous. And as I thought about going back to Revelation chapter 12, where it talks about how the, the woman, the dragon went back to persecute the woman. Uh, she was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she's nourished for times, times, and half, half times. It goes on to talk about how the earth helped the woman. The earth swallowed up, its, opened up its mouth and swallowed it. It makes me think about Romans, uh, excuse me, Revelation 12, 13, where it says, Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, and uh, he gave birth to the male child. So the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for times, times, and half times from the presence of the serpent. So the, the way to be uh, out of the presence of the serpent is to be in the presence of the Lord. And so... That's part of the whole thing that happens on Zion. In Zion, we talk about, uh, we do a study on Zion. In fact, everything we've done with One Church, One Day, Operation Rolling Thunder, and also the strategy called Connect, it was all about uh, in creating a place of God's continual prayer, praise, and worship. And so his God's abiding presence. And again, I won't go into our strategy and what God's been doing, but we've been seeking to do that now for decades and in preparing for this time. Um, I would also submit uh, part of the revelation God gave us on the strategy had to do with that with the uh, revelation of how God would use house churches in these last days. And part of the goal of the strategy was to connect the house church, church by church by church, day by day by day, to create a place of 24-7 prayer, praise, and worship in a city or a region and collaborate together. We can do this. But I would submit to you, it goes on to talk about how the earth helped the woman. The earth opened up its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon spewed out of its mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring and those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of, of uh, Jesus Christ. And so as I went to that and I contemplated Zion, and I then contemplated and looked up the term wilderness. So 
The woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. Well, that word translated wilderness, it's the Greek word eremos. It means lonesome, waste, a desert, desolate, solitary wilderness. Interesting, isn't it? Well, if we go over to Psalm one ten, we look up Zion. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. What does Zion mean? Zion is the permanent capital of Jerusalem. Excuse me, is the permanent capital. Mountain in Jerusalem called Zion. It's a place where David set up 24 7 for praise and worship, the tabernacle of David. Zion means a parched place, a dry, parched place. It's also set up as a sign and a way mark. It's a guiding pillar. Psalm 125, 1 through 3 says this. Those who trust in the Lord are, allowed, are like Mount Zion. Remember, Zion is a dry, parched place. It's a desert. It's a wilderness. Which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth forever. For the scepter of the wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. And that, my friends, is wisdom right there. The scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. That's not what Leviticus 18 taught us. That's what number 16 teaches us. That's why I could go through many scriptures that talk about and refer to the consequences of choosing to sin or do iniquitous actions or abominable actions. As long as the people obey the Lord's wisdom and counsel, then you have you are in his presence, in his presence of fullness, fullness of joy. That's um, Psalm chapter 16, verse 13. In his presence is vindication. That's Psalm 17, 2. In his presence is fullness of joy as well. If you go on to in his presence, we could go to um, Isaiah 4, 2 through 6. Now, the Lord showed me many years ago as he was doing the strategy about one church, one day, connect Operation Rolling Thunder. And basically what I saw was that any places who any place in the world who chooses to do or God's people choose to do what David did on Zion, in a sense, can have Mount Zion in their location. So listen to this. Revelation chapter, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 4, 2 through 6. In that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for those of Israel who have escaped. And it shall be come to pass that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Remember what we saw in Revelation 4? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. It shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who is recorded among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning, then the Lord will create above every dwelling place in Mount Zion. It makes me think about when it talks about by the spirit of judgment and spirit of burning. I think about Korah and the rebellion. Korah chose evil. Korah chose to rebel. The earth swallowed him up. And those that remained were holy unto the Lord, set apart to the Lord. I could go on into that and share, come up with many other examples. But for, for right now, let's get back to the Isaiah 4. It goes on to talk about how he washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst with the spirit of judgment, spirit of burning. Then the Lord will create above, her, above every dwelling place of Mount Zion. The Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion. Any place where God's people choose to do what David did in Zion can have Mount Zion, can have the tabernacle of David in their location. 
And it talks about, in every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies, a cloud of smoke by day and shining flaming fire by night, for over all the glory there will be a covering. And there will be a tabernacle for a shade in the daytime uh, from the heat and a place of refuge and shelter from the storm and the rain. It makes me thinking about our orphanage, who's literally God has sometimes hid them in plain sight in front of the uh, the uh, junta that is uh, persecuting uh, Christians and, the, and oppressing the people. And I've seen that these are the ones who established the house of prayer that the uh, adversary bombed. And so my point is this, God can hide you in plain sight. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. There's those that are led by the Spirit of God, they're like the wind. Who knows where they go? But this, the people, the eagles will gather together. God's people will gather together wherever the dead carcasses are, wherever our people are, they will choose to die to themselves and live to Him. These will be like the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. So that is my encouragement, what I got from this eagle and the sign and where it took me to. And what I got was revelation about Matthew chapter 24, verse 28. Wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Wherever there are people who embrace the cross will be the sons of God in this day. I pray the Lord bless you, keep you. I pray the Lord give you further insight. We can continue unpacking this actually for hours. I know this has gone long, but I trust this will inspire you and encourage you to press in and draw near to our Heavenly Father. Press in to learn to be led by the Spirit. One of the keys to being led by the Spirit is you need to know what the Word says. It's not just the Word of God. It's not just the Spirit of God. You have to combine both together because Jesus is the Word of God. John 1.1 1, 1, uh, talks about, you know, He... He, he is the, well, I won't go to that. I have to go to church now. So the Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord give you an awesome day in Jesus' name.